I've been at work now for 24 hours. One more epically great news story. And this one's a real cracker. And then I'm going home. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you again. Now, there is a place in the United States, which has set a renewable energy target of 100% by 2033. And these are the kind of stories I love sharing with you. Now, Michelle Lewis reports for Electric that in June, Rhode Island's House and Senate approved legislation expected to be signed into law by Governor Daniel McKee will require all of the state's electricity to be offset by renewable energy by 2033. That's the fastest timeline of any state anywhere in the US. This is how Rhode Island will achieve its objective of 100% renewable energy by 2033. An executive order issued in January 2020 by then Governor Gina Raimondo, now US Secretary of Commerce, committed Rhode Island to meet its electricity needs with 100% Renewable electricity by 2030. Rhode Island will be offsetting its fossil fuel powered electricity while it moves toward establishing its own renewable sources of power. It's currently heavily dependent on natural gas. As of 2020, according to the US Energy Information Administration, the EIA, natural gas fueled 89% of the state's electricity net generation, the largest share of any state in America. Further, Around 3 out of 10 Rhode Island households use heating oil as their primary source of home heating, which is six times more than the US average. The new legislation encourages the construction of new renewables projects. Now, I was shocked when I read that. Heating oil is used by 30% of citizens of Rhode Island. Heating oil. I mean, this just sounds like 1930s or something. Now, Rhode Island utilities will buy renewable energy certificates in a regional marketplace called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, a cooperative effort among 11 states to reduce emissions. So that means renewable electricity providers in the RGGI will generate renewable energy equivalent to 100% of the energy produced by Rhode Island utilities. Joanna Newman, Senior Director of the Campaign for 100% Renewable Energy for Environment, America said of the approved legislation. Rhode Island is poised to leap to the front of the line of states leading us toward a clean energy powered future. The forward looking commitment marks another milestone in America's clean energy journey. What are their renewable growth plans? Rhode Island's solar outlook isn't all that great. It's currently ranked 31st in the US for solar by the Solar Industries Association with 575 megawatt installed. So 9% of the state's electricity is currently powered by solar. It's also expected to drop 10 places on the SEIA rankings to 41st in the next five years, with a growth projection of an additional 443 megawatt. However, the state is working to significantly grow large scale offshore wind power. That's what I've been talking about. Why would they really bother with solar? There's not really that much sun there. I mean, it's not the least sunny place on the planet, but compared to many other places on the earth, it's not really that sunny. However, right, Rhode Island, where are they? They're surrounded by wind. I watch a guy's YouTube channel. He's a surfer. He lives there. That place is damn windy. It's windy all the time. And offshore wind, capturing some of that energy would work brilliantly, especially considering the incredible advances in offshore wind technology that we've seen over the last decade. And the technology that's been announced that's coming out over the next five years is incredible. I mean, we're talking about wind turbines that are 323 meters tall. I mean, there's one wind farm, just one wind farm, with I think about 60 wind turbines that can power 5 million homes that's been built that turbine facility, that wind farm has been built offshore in Sweden, right? Five million homes for a single wind farm with 60, 60, only 60 turbines. That's the kind of thing that would work perfectly for places like Rhode Island. Rhode Island, which is home to Block Island, 
The US's first offshore wind farm has plans for a 600 megawatt procurement of new offshore wind capacity, equivalent to powering around 340,000 homes annually. As of July 2021, according to the US Census Bureau, there were only 484,902 housing units in the state. So that means just this new wind farm, right, can power almost exactly 65% of existing power needs in Rhode Island. Now, obviously, there's already some renewable energy generation, plus they're adding solar to that. What does that mean? Well, by the time this wind farm is finished, right, by the time that extra solar is put in, and then we add into it the existing wind generation already there, what do you have? That's all we need. That's all we need to get to 100% renewable energy in Rhode Island. The governor's website said the following, including the 30 megawatt Block Island wind farm and the planned 400 megawatt revolution wind project offshore wind would cover more than 50% of the state's projected energy needs. So clearly they're projecting they'll need more energy in 2033 than they need today. On June the 23rd, McKee joined a coalition of governors from 11 East Coast states and the Biden administration to launch a federal state offshore wind implementation partnership which will accelerate the state's offshore wind industries. The Rhode Island government website explains how the partnership will work. It will facilitate state and federal cooperation in building a strong US-based supply chain for offshore wind, growing a skilled workforce for the industry, and addressing important regional matters such as transmission, fishing, and other ocean use issues. The partnership will also commit to collaborating on supply chain strengthening advancing the national offshore wind supply chain roadmap and prioritizing financing for offshore wind vessels. Rhode Island, with a population of just under 1.1 million, consumes less energy on a per capita basis than any other state in North America. Its emissions are also the second lowest among the states after Vermont. Or as I think you guys pronounce it in the US, Vermont, right? Is it Vermont or Vermont? Here in Australia, we call it Vermont. Over there, I'm guessing you call it Vermont. Anyway, Vermont or Vermont doesn't really matter. The point here is, right, renewable energy is coming. And, you know, different solutions work in different places. Rhode Island is a great place for wind. Now, one other thing worth considering for a lot of people there who are currently using heating oil as their primary source of fuel is getting rid of that diesel fuel as the primary source of their home's heat and getting a heat pump installed instead, more efficient and cost-effective over the long term. Also, potentially, if the government sponsored such a project, they could help to reduce emissions in that way as well. Now, technically, purchasing those offset certificates may make them kind of, you know, carbon neutral in a sense. That isn't saying that they're going to be 100% renewable if they're producing electricity from natural gas. However, the way I'm seeing this is that actually they might not be very far off it, if not make it there by 2033. In fact, I would be very confident to say that they will because clearly they are on the right path when it comes to wind power. They have a very strong route to be truly 100% renewable from local and regional resources of wind. New England's offshore wind resource is enormous, and it's especially good during winter when solar generation is more limited. Now, technically, if we break the numbers down here, what we're looking at is that around four terawatt hours of wind generation is what they'll have by 2033 at their current run rate, right? That would give them just over 50% of all their energy needs from wind. Then the 990 megawatts of solar would give them the remaining 32% of present demand, and you would imagine they could easily get another 1.5 gigawatt of offshore wind given what's already in the current pipeline. Now that would actually get them very close to the 100% renewable energy figure. And the other point to consider is that even if you do buy renewable energy credits from someone else, is it really all that different? I mean, for example, if you actually got, say, a farmer to install solar in his farm, right? Apparently, a lot of farmers are doing this now because it provides shade for the animals and the grass actually grows better underneath solar panels than what it does when the panels are not there. So if you've got some farmer, right, who's just over the next state to plant out a bunch of solar and then run a transmission line to you, how is that not actually providing a solution? I think that actually is providing a solution because incentivizing someone else 
not only to make money, but to provide you with renewable energy, which actually does solve the problem. In my view, it's absolutely amazing what can be accomplished once humans put their minds together. And once we start realizing the logic behind renewable energy, just how efficient it's going to be, and just of how efficient it already is, and how truly we really can get to net zero within the next 10 to 15 years all over the world. Now I sound optimistic on this. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Bye-bye.